A couple from Waterford shot to death while they're sleeping. Family and police have a suspect in mind. So why has this case gone cold? Coward. He's a coward. You know, to go in there at night while they're both sleeping and, and mm -hmm. shoot somebody like that. It's been 11 years, but Ken Canal Sr. and his wife Jessie remember every terrible second of July 6, 2005. That was the day a police officer told them their son Ken Jr. had been murdered. He said, you don't know? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, he's deceased. And I went, what? I said, I got to tell my husband this? How am I supposed to tell my husband this? I got to tell him? And I got up and I just looked at him and said, Kenny's dead. In the summer of 2005, 39-year-old Ken Cannell Jr. and his girlfriend, 41-year-old Pamela Barnes, had just moved in together. They were renting a house on Brunswick Boulevard in Waterford Township. He was a mechanic and she was an occupational therapist. Both Pam and Ken lived for their children. Ken had a 15-year-old daughter. Kenny and um, Kylie were like this. You know, they were best friends. You know, that was his only child, and she hasn't been right since. Pam had a nine-year-old daughter, but family members say the girls had not been getting along. They also say Ken Jr. had been having second thoughts about the relationship because of problems with the father of Pam's daughter. And he wasn't happy that his daughter was living with our son. Pam's daughter spent the 4th of July weekend with her father. The Canells say Pam's ex was supposed to bring the girl back that Sunday morning, but he didn't. Pam and Ken Jr.'s bodies were not found for three more days when police officers arrived to do a welfare check. It was a very targeted, specific act. They were both asleep in bed, so never saw anything coming, then there was no signs of a struggle. Waterford Township Police Detective Sergeant Brent Ross says a killer or killers got into the home and shot both Pam and Ken several times. Walked right back out, locked the door on the way out. There was no forced entry, nothing was taken. According to police records, the father of Pam's daughter is listed as their number one person of interest. The police report shows he refused a polygraph test twice. The Canells say he even made odd comments at the funeral home. Our granddaughter Kylie said that he said to her, um, it'll be okay now, it'll be all better now. I just thought it was very odd that he would go to his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend's funeral. That I thought that was really inappropriate. Family members say Pam had been getting ready to go after her ex for thousands in back child support. Records show detectives interviewed dozens of people, but eventually they hit dead ends. After five years, though, investigators searched the yard of a home 17 miles away in Milford. There was a shooting in Milford that we were made aware of by Milford officers that had a lot of the same similarities. We were not able to ever make any conclusions that they were associated, but they are very similar. And guess whose name also came up in that unsolved 1996 Milford shooting as a possible suspect? Pam's ex. So we always hope that somebody will come forward um, that knows something about it and then will just give us that last little piece that we can go forward with. I will go on until I take my last breath. And I'm not going to give up hope. And I want the person who did this to know I am not going away until you're arrested. We are not naming the person of interest because he has not been charged. I did speak to his father, who tells me his son is absolutely innocent and this whole ordeal has been horrible. If you have any information for detectives, please head to WXYZ.com for information on how to get in touch with them. There is a reward available. And we have